They trekked off to a gathering nearby, a barbecue. He didn't want to go, but Lizard talked him into it. Will had his canvas briefcase with him, and he placed it in an out-of-the-way spot, in a bedroom, under a night table, beside the bed. You never knew what kind of drunk might wander in later, when the old granddad and Gordon's flew half-mast with the rest of the liquor cabinet, not to mention the keg. Some girl was already standing there pumping too many times, and cups were filling fast with foam. Inside his briefcase was Balzac's lost illusions eyeglasses for nightfall, an address book, some German snuff, aspirin, an inhaler, a journal, and a pen. Will was impatient like his father before him. If he wanted to leave, he wouldn't wait for anybody unless he had his briefcase along with him and the things he needed to kill time. He wouldn't need it today. There were a few girls out on the deck, quiet, their cheeks turning red in the sun. They became more upbeat when they got a few in them. Lizard went over and sat down and talked to them. Will put his elbows over the railing and watched the cars go by below. The guys around the keg couldn't handle their liquor and began yelling down at people on the sidewalk walking their dogs. One guy and girl walked by holding hands. They looked up when someone shouted, Hey, send up the girl. Just the girl, please. Another kid walked by with a bag around his shoulder that had a label on it, Census 2000, in black on white. They called him up and he stayed until midnight and flashed his bright smile with braces to everybody and then his reflection in the toilet. There was unusual humidity for the fall and Lizard had the brilliant idea of taking a shower in the bathroom in the apartment. There were clean linens, white towels, and a portable CD player with m and in the mix. Lizard left Will enough hot water, but Will turned the spigot cold to fight the humidity. These rehabs were nice. He still wouldn't care to live in one, but there was something to say for water going quickly down a drain without backing up and genuine pressure through the shower head. In Will's place, a shower became a bath unless you had a half gallon of Clorox on hand. What the hell are you doing in there? A voice demanded through the door. Taking a shower with Slim Shady? Who are you? Do you live here? No, I was sweating through my shirt. The girls told me to leave or else. Or else what? Shower. Leave or shower. He got sick of yelling through a door and turned off the shower, turned up the music, and brushed his teeth with the toothbrush he found behind the mirror. He didn't answer the knocks on the door. The guy who lived there didn't give a damn. He was busy down in the yard having it out with the cops because a beer fell off the deck rail and soaked a passerby. Dropped to his knees to the girl in her thirties whose nipples were angry and hard through her beer drenched shirt. He would have transgendered simply to understand her and feel himself up in drunken idolatry. The night came slowly the crowd pressing itself up on the porch. There were a couple young girls Will had met who appeared to be losing control. A good act. He sat beside them because they made him laugh. One was pasty pale with white blonde hair. She stood almost six feet. Her friend was dark tan and a wavy brunette, and they held each other like good girlfriends did. They were both American until they got bored. The blonde started to introduce herself to boys as Inga from Norway, and the hook slid through lips. The brunette made up some story about coming all the way from Bosnia to take care of her sick grandmother, and fish swam upstream into her net. Will was laughing out loud. He recalled why and how he woke with his father at five in the morning to pull the Evinrude into action and catch breakfast for the family. Fishing could be great fun, but these girls, these modern day sirens, Letting him in on the game. They make the joke much crueler. Beautiful cruelty, damn. Coupled with suspense of the unknown. Was he the next victim?